Okay, um, everybody, welcome to this session on Mendeley. Um, just take note that this is um, a basic Mendeley presentation. So there's quite a few things that uh, we're not touching on in this presentation. So we'll focus on the basic functionality of Mendeley. Um, I'm going to share my screen um, and just start with a little PowerPoint. All right, so just a bit on referencing software. Um, what is referencing software? So the basic functionality of referencing software is that it's a place to save and manage your references. Okay, so it's all about the references that you need to do or to use to be able to do your bibliography at the end of your study or your article or whatever. Um, the focus is not on storing PDFs. Okay, sometimes Mendeley does allow that when the PDF article is available for you, the PDF comes with when you upload references, but that's not the aim. There's other places for you to save your PDFs. This is for you to manage your references. Yeah. Um, so there's communication between your word processing program and your references. Um, and this is what Mendeley basically facilitates. So the first thing we do when we uh, create um, a Mendeley account is that you have to um, in, um, what's the word install the MS Word plug in so that you can easily um, get your references from Mendeley and add them to your Word document. Um, so you can easily add your references in a selected referencing style. As we know, different journals or different faculties or different departments need you to do your referencing style in uh, your referencing in different referencing styles so Mendeley can accommodate different styles um, you can even um, edit an existing style sometimes the style is very close to what your supervisor wants from you or what you as a supervisor request from your students and and then you can take a select uh, uh, an existing style and just edit it um, on this point, if you're a supervisor, please help your students by telling them exactly which referencing, referencing style they should use, and please uh, even give them a guide to be able to use this referencing style. If, if you're a student or somebody that's going to be examined, please make sure that you know which referencing style to use, and please insist on a guide so that you know which referencing style to use. Okay. Um, so you can easily, with Mendeley Create, your bibliography from the references that you've used in your article um, in your selected style. Um, you can easily add references early in your document. Often when we use a numerical system like um, Vancouver, you get despondent if you see that, oh goodness, you need to add a new reference way at the top and now all your numbering will change and that might make you uh, despondent so referencing manager can do that easily you just add the reference where you need to add it and the whole numbering system will change um, and you can also easily change the style of the referencing or the bibliography as i've mentioned before okay so which referencing software must i use there's many products available like Mendeley or Zotero, EndNote, cite this for me, RefWorks. Which one must I use? Um, you can select which one you want. None of them, not one of them um, is actually supported formally by ICT on campus. You can use anyone. I usually tell people, make sure that you use one that you know somebody else who's also using it so that you've got that um, expert knowledge near you. Okay. So Mendeley's example, Mendeley has got two legs. The one part of it is on the internet and another part of it is downloaded onto your device. Um, this is done and then you can obviously synchronize the two so that the references that you get on the one place is synchronized and linked to the references in the other place. So when we do an information search, for example, on EBSCO and we need to um, export our references, that's easy. So those are usually internet-based, but you can also add references by hand and that's usually on the desktop. So the two of them synchronize. Um, so you just basically go to mendeley.com, you create a free account and you log in after that and you install the program onto your device. 
So I talked about the MS Word plugin. It's like a little telephone line that you're opening up between um, your word processing and Mendeley so that you easily add references into your Word document. So how do we add references? Um, you might recognize this screen as, as being from an information search on EBSCO host. You see the logo at the back there. Um, I have five references. There's my five references. I want to add them to Mendeley. And how do I add them? I add them by clicking on export. Okay. Um, before I export into Mendeley, it's better to make sure that your desktop, Mendeley desktop is, is open, that you've activated the program and that your Mendeley um, internet site is also open so that the channels are open and Mendeley is ready to receive um, the references that you want to add. So from the EBSCO host search where my five references are, I click on export. This is usually fine the way that it is. If I just click on save with that first um, radio button that was selected, um, click on open these five references, the five references that we have on EBSCO um, is then transported into Mendeley. Mendeley knows the metadata, so it picks up my authors, it picks up my titles, my year, um, the journal, etc. It brings all of that information along. Okay. I can also add references by using other databases like Scopus. In Scopus, the Mendeley button is more pronounced because Scopus and Mendeley are from the same um, company. So that's basically brother and sister. Okay. So um, you can organize folders. So there's folders, you can add your references so that it makes sense in terms of folders, group specific, um, topics together. Um, we can also add an entry manually. That means if you maybe watched a video on YouTube or there's a website that you want to add as reference, you can easily do that. I'll show that in my demonstration. You can also add files. Maybe before you started using, you download, down, using Mendeley, you download a number of articles on your topic in PDF format or whatever. So you can just specify these files. Um, the PDFs gets uploaded into Mendeley, but so does the metadata. So all of these data, metadata uh, at the back also gets uploaded. So that's another way to add references to Mendeley is just by clicking on add files. Right, so now I actually want to insert a citation into my study, whether it's my article or my thesis or whatever. Um, so this is the normal word tabs, uh, the menu bar at the top, there's a tab for references. If I click on that, and if, uh, if I've um, installed the MS Word plugin, I see this little logo that says insert citation with the Mendeley logo. Um, I just place my cursor exactly where I want to add a reference. I can see here what the style is. Um, it's the American Psychological Association, which is supposed to say APA, it's APA, or you can check, uh, you can select um, Chicago, or you can select Vancouver, or you can select Harvard or whatever. As I said, you can edit a specific style. I'm not going to um, do that in this presentation because I think that's getting to be a bit advanced so but you can edit an existing style so you select your referencing style and you add your reference and when you're done you click on the button that says insert bibliography and it inserts your bibliography in the style that you've selected okay if you need to change the style just delete your bibliography highlight the document the entire document change the referencing style, referencing and citation style. It does that, create the bibliography again, and it populates your bibliography in the new format. Okay. So I like to end with this, uh, these few slides. Why, why do I like Mendeley? I like Mendeley because there's lots of support. You can really just Google, uh, how do I do this? How do I do that on Mendeley? Um, there's lots of videos on YouTube. We even have the book in the library. So there's the book in the library. Um, for those of you who don't know me, that's Anna Marie. Um, so you're welcome to contact me if you if you want. I'm going to stop sharing now um, and just go for a live demonstration. So let me stop here. Um,
and I'm going to start sharing again. And now I'm going to share, hopefully my, oh, I don't see it. Let me just stop and get my um, browser going. There's my browser. So let me um, share the browser again. I don't want to share this. Oh, I actually did want to share that one, sorry. So there's my browser. Okay, hear that. Right, so let's first start by doing um, a basic information search. So how we do an information search is we go to the university homepage, uh, we go to library. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm at, I think I am at the library. Okay, so from the university, we go to library. Under resources, we click on electronic resources. And the database I want to go to first is called EBSCO host. So I click on the A to Z database list. I click on E for EBSCO host. Click on EBSCO. Right. The one I take is not the first one, not the discovery service. I take the second one that says EBSCO host web. Click on EBSCO host web. And now I should specify which databases I want to search on. Right, so I only want to search on academic search and on Medline for this search. There's Medline, all right. And I click on continue. And I like to search on the advanced search screen because I think it's easier. Click on advanced. And now I can actually do my information search. So what information am I looking for? I'm looking for uh, information on how risky, risky or safe, or safety, safe it is um, to go air traveling. I can even chop that off air travel in the time of coronavirus or COVID or SARS CoV 2. That's not a do, that's a do. All right, click on search. So that's just a basic information search. Um, if you see these things and you need me to assist you with information searching, you're more than welcome. I don't want stuff from 2003. I only want information from 2019. Right, so there I see quite a number of articles, uh, references to journal articles 91 to tell the truth. Okay, so I'm going to um, just take the first 40 and put them into Mendeley. So I'm clicking, you can see at the bottom here, my Mendeley is open. So I'm clicking share and I'm adding the first 40 results. And now I want to do something with the results. I've put them in the folder, so I go to folder. And I click on export, right? So I want to export all of these, export. I'm exporting the references into my referencing software called Mendeley. So I've selected some articles, I've clicked on export. Um, and this default is fine the way it is. So I'm just gonna click on save and it's going to put this for me in a little RIS file which we see there, and if I click on the RIS file, it opens my Mendeley and it places the references in there. So there's my references. Oh, you can't see that. Okay, let me just stop sharing um, and just start sharing again and show you my Mendeley desktop. These ones have just been added. Okay. Um, it says there at the bottom, 40 documents successfully imported. So I've imported these documents from my EBSCO host information search into Mendeley. Right, um, with Zoom, it needs to be stop sharing and start sharing. So let's share the screen again and just do another search on another database. So that's the EBSCO host articles or 40 references that I have in there. I can also do um, a search on another database like Scopus. 
right? So Scopus, as I said, it's the sister sister company of um, Mendeley. So it's also easy. So there I've got my same search, but the same search in there. I can just maybe also add the asterisk in here. Air travel, I also only want from 2019. I click on search. Right, I get 65 results. This is just a demonstration. So I'm going to select only the page. I think it's 20 results I'm selecting and I'm going to export them. Okay, how, where am I going to export them? Okay, just let's do that again. I clicked on export and there's Mendeley. So I just click on Mendeley. I click on export. All right, so it says the data for my 20 documents have been exported into Mendeley. I can view them in my library. So if I click view them in my library, let me just stop sharing again and open my Mendeley, share the Mendeley. Okay, I'm just going to get it going from the other side. Um, view in my library. And then if I see them in Mendeley, Okay, let me just share again because they opened up in um, my Mendeley reference manager on the internet. Okay, so these are the new ones. I can stop sharing, uh, go back and share again. Where's my sharing now? And share my Mendeley desktop. If I now synchronize, that's the synchronize, um, the 20 new references will be added. Okay, they were added to the internet version of uh, Mendeley. If I do the synchronization, it also adds them to the desktop installation. Right, so it's doing that at the moment. Right, so there's all of the references that I've just added. Okay, now I want to maybe add a reference by hand. Okay, so I just click on edit, actually file, I add entry manually. Uh, the example I have is a web page. So I say web page. I'm just gonna copy and paste the information from the web page that I've got open on the other side. Um, you won't see that and I'm gonna stop, I'm going to stop um, going, sharing and stopping and sharing and stopping. Um, so I'm just going to go back here. This is the, it's a website. The title is this, how safe is air travel? Let me just get the information from, of the author. Kim, um, the year is 2020 and I need the URL, which is the web address. I'm just copying it from the web page and adding it there. All right, save. So now I've added a new reference to my Mendeley. Okay, now I can, another thing I can do is to check for duplicates. We do that under tools, uh, check for duplicates. So, so it tells me which references it thinks are duplicates. Okay, why would they pick up duplicates? Because use multiple databases. And another thing is sometimes like this uh, KOH author, KOH, sometimes you have the same article, but in some instances, the surname is um, spelled using entire uppercase or it's using sentence case. So this is actually the same reference. So what you do here is we just merge, merge the documents. Okay, it's, um, it's usually the same. Um, it's usually the same uh, reference, but it helps a lot to just merge them if it's duplicates. Right, so usually the confidentiality, uh, the um, confidence is quite high, so you can assume that the document, it's the same article. It's just because there's a little, there's a, a difference in spelling, or there's a comma where there's, uh, the other one doesn't have a comma, or the uppercase, or whatever. So or there's all my, all my, um, duplicates removed. Okay, so these are my references. If I click on one of them, 
it gives me the abstract on this side if I want to read the abstract. Right. So now um, let's go back to my Word document and we're going to populate the Word document with references. So I'm going to stop sharing again and start sharing again and open my. Uh, now, where's my Word document? There's my, oh wait, I don't, let me just get the correct Word document. Let me leave this and make sure I've got the correct Word document open. There we go. Um, and I'm sharing. And there's my Word document. Right, so I want to now add references to my journal article. My article is also all about um, safety of flight. But I want to add a reference there. I want to add it there. I click on insert citation and I uh, just start typing the first few words of my um, author. Um, and there we go. I want this one. I can even um, specify page number. If I just click on the reference, I can say page number 55, for example. Okay. Um, there's where I change the referencing style. I'm defaulted on Vancouver, and for now, that's fine for me. I want to add another reference there. So I insert the citation, uh, and I want to add a page number. I just click on the first. I can add a page number figure. I can add all sorts of stuff. Uh, let's say it's page nine. Okay, now I'm done. I'm finished with my thesis. So at the end, I add my bibliography by clicking insert bibliography and it populates the bibliography based on the referencing style. I can change the referencing style. Now, just highlight the whole document, change this into Harvard. There we see it changes into Harvard. If I now do the bibliography, it looks different. Okay, I can again change this. Uh, change this back to Vancouver. I can maybe add another reference in here. So I'm adding a reference earlier in my earlier in my document. So now the numbers will change to accommodate this. So this one turns to one. This one becomes number two, and all of this is accommodated in my bibliography. Okay, I can again change this, uh, change this to Harvard and insert the bibliography again, and it's now in Harvard. So it's alphabetical and everything's fine. Usually at, at this point, I tell students, remember that it's you that's submitting, it's not Mendeley. So please, please, please make sure uh, after you've done this, to just make sure that everything is fine and that it adheres to what you're supposed to do. Okay, maybe your guide says no brackets around the, the date, then you just delete them, you take them out. Okay, uh, maybe yours says this shouldn't be italics, then you take out the italics. Right, maybe yours says I don't need um, quotation marks around the article title, then you remove them. Okay, so it's you that's submitting, it's not Mendeley that's submitting. Um, I think that's most of what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you that uh, you can add references by hand or you can upload articles and the metadata goes automatic. Um, I wanted to show you that you can, um, oh, there's one thing I haven't showed you. Let me just stop this and share again. Go to Mendeley Desktop. You can use folders, as I said, to help you to organize your um, references. You can also create groups that people can share. So you and your supervisor or you and your student or you and a co-author can share um, this, this list of references. This can be very important when you do something like a systematic references are relevant. Um, it's easy to just sort. I can sort on author. Now it's alphabetical, so I can sort of see what's halfway and tell the one uh, supervisor, you have to go, um, you have to check all the documents until 
B and I'll start checking the documents from S or whatever. So then everybody is on the same page and there's no duplication of work. Okay. Um, something like a referencing software is incredibly important and useful when you do something like a systematic review. I've had a student the other day and she had about 3000 references for a systematic review. Um, and we can export it into uh, Excel, which is a nice format, but um, the fields aren't standardized. So sometimes it, it becomes a bit of a mashup and it's difficult to sort that out. So you can always import into Mendeley and from Mendeley, again, you can, you can export into something like um, Excel, but that's um, an advanced part that I'm not going to focus on at the moment. Um, I've also mentioned that you can edit an existing style in Mendeley. I'm also not going to touch on this because in my mind, that's also a bit advanced. Okay. Um, as I said with Mendeley, there's lots of support. Many times I've had, there was one lady where the bibliography, where the references just didn't want to, they didn't want to stick. The minute you put them in, they went out again. So I used my good friend Google um, to help me find the problem and help me fix the problem. Remember, remember Google, everybody says, oh, the librarian and Google. Google is your friend, Google helps you a lot. The only thing we don't do on Google is to find academic information. That's why I did my information search on two databases, the EBSCO databases and the Scopus. So anything else you do, you can use Google for just not searching for information for your academic work. Okay, so if there's an issue that pops up um, with Mendeley, you're welcome to ask me. Um, sometimes you uh, have to maybe copy and paste into a new document. Um, some questions I've had is, uh, can you add the same reference multiple times in a document? Obviously you can, um, if it's a numerical system, it will just use the same number all the time for that specific reference. Um, if it's a, an alphabetical system, it doesn't matter in the bibliography in the end. I'm thinking of some of the other issues I've picked up. Um, one issue is how do I, uh, maybe I need to do a bibliography at the end of each um, some there's there's you can Google that also for page breaks and so on how to do that. Um, so so this is the basic Mendeley is how how we access Mendeley, how we um, populate it with our references, and how we get our references from Mendeley into our word processing program in the referencing style that we need. How then to populate our bibliography, um, and that's the scope of this session. So thank you very much for attending. If there's any questions, you're welcome to ask, email me or whatever. Um, if you have any comments to make, you're welcome to make them. If you have a problem with Mendeley, which you think I can sort out, you're more than welcome to contact me. But thank you very much for your time and attention. Um, this is recorded and it will be made available. Um, I'm not certain yet where, but yeah, thank you for your time and attention and goodbye.